A DC shunt motor is a DC motor that has the field coil connected in shunt or parallel with the armature. A surprising operation of a DC shunt motor occurs when you decrease the current in the field coil and thus reduce the strength of the magnetic field. The motor armature will actually turn faster. This motor action is counterintuitive. You would expect that decreasing the current and thus producing less power would slow the motor down. To explain this phenomenon, let's take a closer look at what happens in a shunt motor circuit when the current is adjusted lower. In this diagram, we have an armature, which, as you know, is the part that rotates in the presence of a magnetic flux, a field coil that generates a magnetic field, and a controller to vary the field resistance, thus altering current flow and the strength of the magnetic field. Here we have a series of line diagrams to illustrate the relationships of the motor properties as a result of reducing current to the armature. When the field current is decreased, the counter electromotive force, or CEMF, drops off dramatically. This sudden change results from a reduction in the EMF generated in the armature coils, which are turning within a less dense magnetic field. The less dense magnetic field is a result of the lowered field current flow. This also causes a spike in the voltage drop across the resistance of the armature. Because the total applied voltage is across the armature, any change in the drop across one part of the armature, either the CEMF or the voltage drop across the resistance of the armature coils, VRA, will be made up by an increase in the drop across the other component. Thus, if there is 100 volts applied and the CEMF is 80 volts, the drop across the resistance of the armature coils will be 20 volts. When the field current is reduced, the CEMF drops to 50 volts and the drop across the resistance of the armature coils, VRA, increases to 50 volts. Therefore, the total voltage is always maintained. Because the armature resistance, RA, is constant, as VRA changes the armature current, IA changes to compensate for the increase or decrease in the voltage drop. Thus, the current increase in the armature strengthens the magnetic field in the armature. A subsequent torque spike leads to a gradual increase in the speed. A new armature speed is attained after a reduced field current is established. The CEMF returns back to near the original levels as the armature spins faster in a reduced magnetic field. The voltage drop across the armature returns to near its previous level, with the current following a similar decrease. This happens when any of the parameters are changed, such as load and applied voltage, not just limited to field current changes. A DC drive is the functional circuitry that can be employed to precisely control a DC motor. The drive operation allows the application of varying DC input levels so that the motor runs efficiently at different speeds. A DC drive circuit is composed of three main components, a operator controller, a drive controller, and a DC motor. One of the functions an operator controller provides is a method for altering the speed of the motor. The drive controller will regulate the input by means of either a phase control device or a pulse width modulator. 
and the DC motor can be an electrical device that needs to be adjusted to perform at various speeds. Let's look at the phase control method in a bit more detail. Pulse width modulation, or PWM, is a method that uses digital signals to control power applications. In this example, a PWM uses a full wave rectifier to convert an AC input voltage into a DC output level of 300 volts. A control circuit operating a DC switch turns the DC output on and off. This controller device can be an SCR or a powerful transistor. The on and off cycling of the controller circuit produces a repeating 300 volt square wave with a fixed frequency and width, as illustrated by this typical output displayed on an oscilloscope. One of the parameters of a square wave is the duty cycle. This is derived by dividing the time on duration or width, T sub zero, by the duration of the wave period, T. Thus, if the period is 2 milliseconds and the time on duration is 1 millisecond, then the duty cycle is 0.5. The voltage reduction will be 0.5 times 100% or 50%. Multiplying the duty cycle times the input voltage will give you the voltage output. In this example, a 300 volt input will be modulated by 50%, so the final voltage delivered to the load or motor is 150 volts. Thus, controlling the speed of a motor can be achieved by modulating the square signal waveform.